Billerica Public Library's Book Buzz January Publications. Our first genre is contemporary fiction. At the Edge of Height by Kathleen Salgaman. Maddie Donato, homeless at 20, has made a family of sorts in the dangerous spaces of San Francisco's Golden Gate Park. She knows whom to trust, where to eat, when to move locations, and how to take care of her dog. It's the only home she has. When she outwittingly witnesses the murder of a young homeless boy it, and is seen by the perpetrator, her relatively stable life is upended. Suddenly, everyone from the police to the dead boy's parents want to talk to Maddie about what she saw. As adults pressure her to give up her secrets and to reunite with her own family before she meets a similar fate, Maddie must decide whether she wants to stay lost or be found. Black Buck by Matteo Ascapor. An unambitious 22-year-old Darren lives in a bedstead brownstone with his mother, who wants nothing more than to see him live up to his potential as the Victorian of Bronx science. But Darren is content working at Starbucks in the lobby of Midtown office building, hanging out with his girlfriend, Soraya, and eating his mother's home-cooked meals. All that changes when a chance encounter with Rick Daniels, the Silver Tongue CEO of Someone. NYC's hottest tech startup results in exclusive invitation for Darren to join an elite sales team on the 36th floor. After enduring a hell week of training, Darren, the only black person in the company, reimagines himself as Buck, a ruthless salesman unrecognizable to his friends and family. But when things turn tragic at home, Buck feels he's hit rock bottom. He begins to hatch a plan to help young people of color infiltrate America's sales force, setting off a chain of events that forever changes the game. The Fortunate Ones by Ed Talkington. When Charlie Borkin was young, he thought his life with his single mother on the working class side of Nashville was perfectly fine. But when his mother arranges for him to be admitted as a scholarship student to an elite private school, he is suddenly introduced to what the world can feel like to someone cushioned by money. That world he discovers is almost irresistible place where one can bend and break rules and still end up untarnished. As he gets drawn into friendship with the charismatic upperclassman Archer Craig in a wealthy family that treats him like an adopted son, Charlie quickly adapts to the life in the upper class of Nashville society. Under their charming and alcohol-soaked spell, how can he not relax, enjoy it all? The lack of anxiety over money. The easy sum is spent poolside at a perfectly appointed mansions, lavish parties, the freedom to make mistakes, knowing that everything can be glossed over or fixed. But over time, Charlie is increasingly pulled into covering for Archer's constant deceits and his casual bigotry. At what point will the attraction of wealth and prestige wear off enough for Charlie to take a stand? And will he? Burnt Sugar by Abney Doshi. I would be lying if I say my mother's misery has never given me pleasure, says Antara. Tara's now adult daughter in her youth. Tara was wild. She abandoned her marriage to join an ashram. And while Tara is busy as a partner to the ashram spiritual leader, Baba, little and Tara is cared for by an older do dovatee, Kaylee, an American who came to the ashram after devastating loss. Tara also embarks on a stint as a beggar, mostly despite her wealthy parents, and spends years chasing disheveled homeless artists, all with young Antara in tow. But now Tara is forgetting things, and Antara is an adult, an artist, and married, and must search for a way to make peace with the past that haunts her as she confronts the task of caring for her woman who never cared for her. Shipped by Angie Hockman. Between taking night classes for her MBA and her demanding day job at a cruise line, marketing manager Henley Evans barely has time for herself, let alone family, friends, or dating. But when she's shortlisted for the promotion, 
of her dreams, all of her sacrifices finally seem worth it. The only problem? Graham Crawford Collins, the remote social media manager and the bane of her existence, is also up for the position. Although they've never met in person, their epic email battles are stuff of office legend. Their boss tasked each of them with the drafting a proposal on how to boost bookings in the Gapalotes. Best proposal wins the promotion. There is just one catch. They have to go on a company cruise to the islands together. But when the two meet on ship, Henley is shocked to discover that the real Graham is nothing like she imagined. And as they explore the islands together, she soon finds the line between loathing and liking thinner than a postcard. With her career dreams in her sights and growing attraction to the competition, Henley begins questioning her life choices because what's the point of working all the time if you never actually live? Confessions of a Curious Bookseller by Elizabeth Green. Without question, Fawn Birchall knows that her used bookstore is the heart of West Philadelphia, a cornerstone of culture for the community that for the past 20 years has found the quirkiness absolutely charming. When a pleasant young indie bookseller invades her block, Fawn is convinced that his cushy couches, impressive selection, coffee bar, and knowledgeable staff are a neighborhood blight. Misguided yet blindly resilient, Fawn readies for battle. But as she wages her war, Fawn is forced to reflect on a few unavoidable truths. The tribulations of online dating, a strained relationship with her family, and a devoted, if not always, law-abiding intern. Not to mention what to do about the pen pal with whom she hasn't been entirely honest, and the litany of repairs of our aging store requires. Now it's time for her to dig deep, use every trick at her disposal if she's to reclaim her beloved business and her life. Faye Far Away by Helen Fisher. Faye is 37 year old happily married mother of two young daughters. Every night before she puts them to bed, she whispers to them, you are good, you are kind, you are clever, you are funny. She's determined that they never doubt for one minute that their mothers loves them unconditionally. After all, her own mother, Jeannie, had died when she was only seven years old, and Faye has never gotten over the intense pain of losing her. But one day, her life is turned upside down when she finds herself in 1977, the year before her mother died. Suddenly, she has a chance to reconnect with her long-lost mother and even meets her own younger self, a little girl she can barely remember. Jeannie doesn't recognize Faye as her daughter, of course, even though there is something familiar about her. As the two women become close friends, they share many secrets, but Faye is terrified of revealing the truth about her identity. Will it prevent her from returning to her own time and her beloved husband and daughters? What if she's doomed to remain in the past forever? Faye knows that eventually she'll have to choose between those she loves in the past and those she loves in the here and now, and that the knowledge presents her with an impossible choice. Our second genre is historical fiction. Sergeant Salinger by Jerome Caron. J.D. Salinger, mysterious author of Catcher in the Rye, is remembered today as a reclusive misanthrope. Jerome's wrote this historical fiction on Salinger as a young American World War II draftee assigned to Counterintelligence Corp, a band of secret soldiers who trained with the British. A rifleman and an interrogator, he witnessed all the horrors of war from the landing on D-Day to the relentless hand-in-hand combat in the hedgerows of Normandy to the Battle of the Bulge and finally to the first Allied entry into the Bahavian Day camp where corpses were piled like coalwood. After the war, he interned in a Nuremberg psychiatric clinic. Salinger became enchanted with the suspected Nazi informant. They married, but not long after he brought her home to New York, the marriage collapsed. Maladjusted to civilian life, he lived like a spook with invisible stripes on his shoulder, the ghost of the murdered inside his head, and plenty of stories to tell. 
Bride of the Sea by Amin Quota. During a snowy Cleveland February, newlywed university students, Monia and Sada, are expecting their first child. And he is harboring a secret. The word divorce is whispering in his ear. Soon, their marriage will end, and Manea will return to Saudi Arabia while Sadar remains in Cleveland with their daughter, Hanadi. Consumed by a growing fear of losing her daughter, Sadar disappears with the little girl, leaving Manea to desperately search for the daughter for years. The repercussions of the abduction ripple outward, not only changing the lives of Hundi and her parents, but also their interwoven family and friends, those who must choose sides and hide their own deeply guarded secrets. And when Hundi comes of age, she finds herself at the center of this conflict, torn between the world she grew up in and the family across the ocean. How can she exist between parents, between countries? Our Darkest Night by Jennifer Robson. It is the autumn of 1943 and life is becoming increasingly perilous for the Italian Jews, like the Mason family. With Nazi Germany now occupying most of her beloved homeland and the threat of imprisonment and deportation growing ever more certain, Antonia has but one hope to survive to leave Venice and her beloved parents and hide in the countryside with the man she has only just met. Nico Girardi was studying for the priesthood until circumstances forced him to leave the cemetery to run his family's farm. A moral and just man, he could not stand by when the fascists and the Nazis began taking innocent lives. Rather than risk a perilous escape across the mountains, Nina will pose as his new bride. And to keep her safe and protect secrets of his own, Nico and Nina must convince prying eyes that they are happily married and in love. But farm life is not easy for the cultured city girl who dreams of becoming a doctor like her father. And Nico's Provincial neighbors are wary of this soft and educated woman they do not know. Even worse, their distrust is shared by the local Nazi official with a vendetta against Nico. The more he learns of Nina, the more his suspicions grow, and with them his determination to exact revenge. As Nino and Nico come to know each other, their feelings deepen, transforming their relationship into more than a charade. Yet both fear that with every passing day brings them closer to being torn apart. Children's Blizzard by Melanie Benjamin. The morning of January 12, 1888 was unusually mild, following a punishing cold spell. It was warm enough for the homesteaders of Dakota Territory to venture out again and for their children to return to school without their heavy coats. Leaving them unprepared when disaster struck. At the hour when most prairie schools were letting out for the day, a terrifying, fast-moving blizzard blew in without warning. School teachers as young as 16 were suddenly faced with life and death decisions. Keep the children inside to risk freezing to death when fuel ran out or send them home praying they wouldn't get lost in the storm. Our third genre is science fiction. A History of What Comes Next by Sylvania Nouveau. Always run, never fight, preserve the knowledge, survive at all costs, take them to the stars. Over 99 identical generations, Mia's family has shaped human history to push them to the stars, making brutal, wrenching choices and sacrificing countless lives. Her turn comes at the dawn of the age of rocketry. Her mission to lure Werner von Brand away from the Nazi party and into the American rocket program and secure the future of the space race. But Mia's family is not the only group pushing the levers of history or even more ruthless enemy lurks behind the scenes. Amid the Crowd of Stars by Stephen Lee. What responsibilities do we have to isolate ourselves from? the bacteria, viruses, and other life of another world, and to prevent any of the alien biome from being brought back to Earth. What happens when a group of humans are stranded for centuries on another world with no choice but to expose themselves to that world? After such a long exposure, are they still 
Homo sapiens, or have they become another species entirely? These questions are the heart of this intriguing novel, explored through the complicated lives and the viewpoints of the people who have come to rescue the stranded colony, the members of that colony, and the sentient alien life that dwells on the planet. Difficult life and death choices will be made by all involved. We Could Be Heroes by Mike Chen. Jamie woke up in an empty apartment with no memory and only a few clues to his identity, but with the ability to read and erase other people's memories, a power he uses to hold up banks, to buy coffee, cat food, and books. Zoe is also searching for her past and using her abilities of speed and strength to deliver fast food, and she'll occasionally put on a cool suit and beat up the bad guys, if she feels like it. When the arch rivals meet in a memory loss support group, they realize the only way to reveal their hidden past might be through each other. As they uncover an ongoing threat, suddenly much more is at stake than their fragile friendship. With countless people at risk, Zoe and Jamie will have to recognize that sometimes being a hero starts with trusting someone else and yourself. Persephone Station by Stina Lake. Persephone Station is seemingly a backwater planet that has largely been ignored by the United Republic of Worlds, becomes the focus for the Serial Offlift Corporation as the planet has a few secrets the corporation wants to exploit. Rosie, owner of Monk's Bar in the corporate town of West Brenner, caters to wannabe criminals and rich Eartha Taurus of a sort at the front bar. However, exactly two types of people drank at Monk's back bar, members of a rather exclusive criminal class, and those who sought to employ them. Angel, ex-Marine and head of a semi-organized band of criminals, wayward assassins, washed up mercenaries with the print chance for doing honorable thing is asked to perform a job for Rosie. What this job reveals will affect Persephone and put Angel and her squad up against an army. Despite the odds, they are rearing for a fight with the several off-left corporation. For Angel, she knows that once honor is lost, there is no regaining it. That doesn't mean she can't damn well try. Our fourth genre is fantasy. Night's Ransom by Jeff Whaler. Uneasy lies the head that wears a crown. A brutal war of succession has plunged the court of King Fountain into a power struggle between a charitable king who took the crown unlawfully and his ambitious rival, Devin Argentine. The balance of power between the two men hinges on the faith of a young boy ensnared in this courtly intrigue, a boy befittingly nicknamed Ransom. When the Argentine family finally rules, Ransom must make his own way in the world. Opportunities open and shut before him as he journeys along the path to knighthood, blind to a shadow conspiracy of jealousy and revenge. Securing his place will not be easy, nor will winning the affection of Lady Claire de Moro, a fury young heiress from an unpredictably mad kingdom. Ransom interprets an abduction plot targeting the queen of Craigington and earns a position in service to his son, the firstborn of the new Argentine dynasty. But conflict and treachery threaten the family, and Ransom must also come to understand and hone his powers, abilities that involve more than his mastery with the blade, that make him as much as a target as his lord. The Ruthless Lady's Guide to Wizardry by C.M. Wagner. Delari Wells, petty con artist, occasional thief, and partly educated fire witch, is behind in her rent in the city of Lescourt again. Then she sees the wanted sign, seeking female persons of marital or magical ability to guard a lady of some importance prior to the celebration of her marriage. Delhi fast talks her way into the job and joins a team of highly peculiar women tasked with protecting their wealthy charge from unknown assassins.
Deli quickly sets her sights on one of her companions, the confident and well-bred Wynn. The job looks like nothing but romance and easy money until things take a deadly turn. With the help of a bird-loving Negro romancer, a shape-shifting schoolgirl, and an ill-tempered, reanimated mouse named Buttons, Deli and Wynn are determined to get past an adversary who wields a twisted magic and has friends in the highest of places. The Secret Chapter by Genevieve Cogman. A librarian's work is never done, and Irene is summoned to the library. The world where she grew up is in danger of veering deep into chaos, and she needs to obtain a particular book to stop this from happening. Her only choice is to contact a mysterious Fay information broker, the trader of rare objects, Mr. Nemo. Irene and Kay make their way to Mr. Nemo's re remote Caribbean island and are invited to dinner, which includes unlikely company. Mr. Nemo has an offer for everyone there. He wants them to steal a Pacific painting from a Pacific world, but to get their reward, they will have to form a team, including a dragon techie, a fake thief, a gambler, a driver, and the muscle. Their goal the museum in Vienna, in an early 21st century world where their toughest challenge might be each other. Our fifth genre is suspense. Prodigal Son by Greg Hurwitz. As a boy, Evan Smoke was pulled out of a foster home and trained in an off-the-books operation known as the Orphan Program. He was a government assassin, perhaps the best known to a few insiders as Orphan X. He eventually broke with the program and adopted a new name, the Nowhere Man, and a new mission, helping the most desperate in their times of trouble. But the highest power in the country has made him a tempting offer. And in exchange for an unofficial pardon, he must stop his activities as the nowhere man. Now, Evan has to do one thing he's at least equipped to do, live a normal life. But then he gets a call for help from the one person he never expected, a woman claiming to have given him up for adoption, a woman he never knew, his mother, her unlikely Request help Andrew Duran, a man whose life had gone off the rails, who was in the wrong place at the wrong time, bringing him to the deadly attention of very powerful figures. Now, a brutal brother and sister assassination team are after him, and with no one to turn to and no safe place to hide, Evan is Duran's only option. But when the hidden cabal catches on to what Evan is doing, Everything he fought for is on the line, including his own life. Bone Canyon by Lee Goldberg. A disastrous wildfire scorches the Santa Monica Mountains, exposing the charred remains of a woman who disappeared years ago. The investigation is assigned to Eve Ronan, the youngest homicide detective in the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, a position that forces her to prove herself again and again. This time, though, she has much more to prove. Bones don't lie, and these have a heroic story to tell. Eve tirelessly digs into the past, unearthing dark secrets that reveal nothing about the case is as it seems. With almost no one she can trust, her relentless pursuit of justice for the forgotten dead could put Eve's own life in peril. If I Disappear by Eliza Jane Brazer. Sarah loves true crime podcasts. They give her a sense of control in a world where women just like her disappear daily. She's sure they are preparing her for something. So when Rachel, her favorite podcast host, goes missing, Sarah knows it's time to act. Rachel has always taught her to trust her instincts. Sarah follows the clues hidden in the episodes to an isolated ranch outside Rachel's small hometown to begin her search. She's convinced her investigation will make Rachel so proud. But the more Sarah digs into the unfamiliar world, the more off things start to fail. 
because Rachel is not the first woman to vanish from the ranch and she won't be the last. Rachel did try to warn her. Shiva by Allie Reynolds. When Mila accepts an off-season invitation to La Rocchia, a cozy ski resort in the French Alps, she's expecting an intimate weekend of catching up with four old friends. It might have been a decade since she saw them last, but she's never forgotten the bond they forged on this very mountain during a winter spent fiercely training for an elite snowboarding competition. Yet no sooner do Mila and the others arrive for the reunion that they realize something is horribly wrong. The resort is deserted. The cable cars that deliver them to the mountaintop have stopped working. Their cell phones missing, and inside the hotel, detailed instructions await them. An icebreaker game designed to draw out their secrets, a game meant to remind them of Saska and the sixth member of their group who vanished the morning of the competition years before and has long been presumed dead. Stranded in the resort, Mill is not sure what's worse, the increasingly sinister things happening around her or the looming snowstorm that's making escape even more impossible. All she knows is that there's no one on the mountain she can trust because someone has gathered them there to find out the truth about Saska, someone who will stop at nothing to get answers. And if Mila's not careful, she could be the next to disappear. In the Garden of Spite by Camilla Bruce. They whisper about her in Chicago. Men come to her with their hopes, their dreams, their fortunes, but no one sees them leave. No one sees them at all after they come to call on the widow of Laporte. The good people of Indiana may have their suspicions, but if those fools knew what she had given up, what was taken from her, how she suffered, surely they'd understand. Bella Gunnis learned a long time ago that a woman has to make her own way in this world. That's all it is. A bloody means to an end. A glorious enterprise meant to raise her from the bleak, colorless drudgery of her childhood to the life she deserves. After all, vermin always survives. All the Colors of Night by Jane Ann Krantz North Chaston possesses a paranormal talent that gives him the ability to track down the most dangerous psychic criminals. When his father suddenly falls into a coma-like state, North is convinced it was caused by a deadly artifact that traces back to the days of a secret government program known only as the Blue Stone Project. North knows his only hope of saving, saving his father is to find the artifact. He is good when it comes down to tracking killers, but to locate the relic, he's going to need help from a psychic who knows the shadowy world of obsessive collectors, deceptive dealers, and ruthless raiders. With her reputation in ruins after a false accusation, antiques expert Sierra Raines is looking for a fresh start. She turns to the murky backwaters of the paranormal artifacts trade, finding and transporting valuable objects with psychic providence. When Noth approaches her for help, Sierra takes him on as a client, though not without reservations. Noth represents the mysterious foundation, the secretive organization established to police the underworld populated by psychic criminals and those like Sierra who make a living in the shadows of that world. The pier unearthed shocking truths about what happened that fateful night, but they are playing with fire. Someone in town knows what they discovered and will do anything to make sure the secrets stay buried. Our six genre memoirs. Featherhood by Charlie Gilmore. One spring day, a baby magpie falls out of its nest and into Charlie's hands. Magpies, he soon discovers, are as clever and mysterious as monkeys. They are also notorious thieves, and this one quickly steals his heart. By the time the creature develops shiny black feathers that inspire the name Benzene, Charlie and the bird have forged an unbreakable bond. While caring for Benzene, Charlie learns his biological father, an eccentric British poet named Heathcote Williams, who vanished when Charlie was six months old, is ill. 
As he grapples with, he quotes abandonment, Charlie comes across one of his poems, in which he quote describes how an empress young jackdaw fell from its nest and captured his affection. Over time, Benzine helps Charlie unravel his fears about repeating the past and embrace the role of father himself. Ida B., The Queen by Michelle Duster, is the awe-inspiring story of a pioneer woman who was often overlooked and underestimated, a woman who refused to exit a train car meant for white passengers, a woman brought to light the horrors of lynching in America, and a woman who co-founded the NAACP. A century after her death, Wells' genius is being celebrated in a popular culture by politicians through song, public artwork, and landmarks. Like her contemporaries, Frederick Douglass and Susan B. Anthony, Wells left an indelible mark on history, one that can still be felt today. As America confronts the unfinished business of systematic racism, Ida B. the Queen plays tribute to a transformational leader that reminds us of the power we all hold to smash the status quo. Our last genre is nonfiction. We Came, We Saw, We Left by Charles Whalen. What would happen if you quit your life for a year? In a pre-COVID-19 world, the Whalen family decided to find out leaving behind work, school, and even the family dogs to travel the world on a modest budget. Whalen paints a picture of adventure and connectivity, juggling themes of local politics, global economics, and family dynamics while exploring the answers to questions like, how do you sneak out of Peruvian town that has been barricaded by local army? And where can you get treatment for flesh-eating bacteria your daughter picked up two continents ago? From Colombia to Cambodia. We came, we saw, we left, chronicles nine months across six continents with three teenagers. What could go wrong? In case you get hit by a bus by Abby Schneiderman. The odds of getting hit by a bus are 495,000 to one, but the odds that you're going to die someday, mm, exactly. Even the most disorganized among us can take control of our on and offline details so our loved ones won't have to scramble later. The experts at Everplans, a leading company in digital life planning, make it possible in this essential and easy to follow book, breaking the task down into three levels. From the most urgent to the technical, to the nostalgic, this clear step-by-step -step program not only removes the anxiety and stress from getting your life in order, it's actually libertating and deeply satisfying knowing that you're leaving the best potting gift imaginable. When you finish this book, you will have a system for managing all your passwords and secret codes, organize your money, assets, bills, and debts, a complete understanding of all medical directives and legal documents you need, a plan for meaningful photos, recipes, and family heirlooms, a record of your personal history, interests, beliefs, and life lessons, an instruction manual for your home and vehicles, your funeral planned and obituary written if you're up to it. Everybody has a podcast except you by Justin McElroy. Justin, Travis, and Griffin made their names as advice-giving brothers who have no business giving advice on the hit podcast, My Brother, My Brother, and Me. But while they may not have the best relationship or workplace advice, they certainly make you laugh, and they do know a thing or two about podcasting. From their start, independently producing and releasing the early episodes of My Brother, My Brother, and Me to their 11 currently available podcasts. And the brothers have become experts in creating successful podcasts. And now they want to share what they've learned with you. The brothers will walk you through the process of turning an idea into air candy for legions of fans, sharing their expertise on everything from deciding on an effective name, what type of microphone to use, and to possibly making lots of money. The Black Butterfly by Lawrence Brown. 
the world gasped in April 2015 as Baltimore erupted and Black Lives Matter activists incensed by Freddie Gray's brutal death and police custody shut down highways and marched on city streets. In The Black Butterfly, a reference to the fact that Baltimore's majority black population spreads out on both sides of the converted strip of real estate running down the center of the city like butterfly's wings. Lawrence Brown reveals the ongoing historical trauma caused by a combination of policies, practices, systems, budgets is the root of uprising and crisis in the hyper-segregated cities around the country. But there is a reason to hope. Throughout the book, Brown offers a clear five-step plan for activists, nonprofits, and public officials to achieve racial equality. Not content to simply describe and decry urban problems, Brown offers up a wide range of innovative solutions to help heal and restore redline Black neighborhoods, including municipals, uh, persuasively arguing that since urban was intentionally erected, it can be intentionally dismantled. The Black Butterfly demonstrates that America cannot reflect that Black Lives Matter until it sees how Black neighborhoods matter.